cashing in. Ukraine gets a bigger boost for war recovery as the EU unanimously approves a $55 billion aid package. However, EU nations are unlocking that money in various stages for the next four years, pending systematic approvals. An apology too late? CEOs of Meta, X and TikTok grilled about online child safety at a US hearing. Parents and lawmakers say executives are not doing enough to thwart dangers including sexual exploitation and bullying. Blocking the aid 30 protesters detain amid clashes at Karam Shalom over aid to Gaza. Some 300 demonstrators try to block vehicles at the crossing. IDF declares Nizana Crossing closed military zone over protests. And a cheeky thief. A little criminal in Aussie tried to get his way and kinda had to face the immediate consequences. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ala Verna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Mahish Jani. Very good evening, Paul. Thank you very much for joining us uh, right here on World News Tonight. Our rundown is packed with major events occurring around the world. Farmers in the EU are on strike and the opposition in Taiwan has a victory in that country's parliament. But tonight we begin with some breaking news. Now, all 27 European leaders have agreed to a $55 billion aid package for Ukraine, uh, according to the European Council. Now, uh, its president, Charles Michael, said in a tweet uh, that we have a deal and that uh, they are working on the uh, nitty gritties of the entire package. He said in that agreement, locks in steadfast, long-term, predictable funding for Ukraine. There have been fears that Hungary's uh, Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, would uh, block the aid package as he had done already at the European summit last December. Orban has said that uh, he wanted to force um, a rethink of EU policies towards Ukraine and question the idea of committing funds to Ukraine for the next four years. Diplomatic sources have told reporters that the new deal includes a yearly discussions of the package and the options to review it in two years if needed. Now to the United States, uh, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg has apologized to families who say their children had been harmed by social media during a fiery hearing in the U.S. Senate. Zuckerberg, who runs Instagram and Facebook, turned to them and said, and I quote, no one should go through what they had, end of quote. The United States uh, Senate had some harsh words for the world's top social media giants whom they say are responsible for the worst that occurs to children on their platforms. The CEOs of Discord, Snap, TikTok, X and Meta met by a sea of parents holding photos of children they say were victimized on the social media company's platforms. Mr. Zuckerberg, you and the companies before us, I know you don't mean it to be so, but you have blood on your hands. You have a product. You have a product that's killing people. The topic today, sexual predators targeting young people through social media and the blackmailing of teens tricked into sharing explicit photos. You're on national television. Would you like now to apologize to the victims who have been harmed by your product? Show them the pictures. In a dramatic moment during questioning from Republican Senator Josh Hawley, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg stood to address the parents packing today's hearing. And this is why we invested so much and are going to continue doing these streaming efforts to, uh, to make sure that no one has to go through the types of things that your families have had to suffer. The tech CEOs today choosing to keep their remarks to their testimony, not stopping for any questions about the surge in child sexual abuse material online. At today's hearing, SNAP's CEO was apologetic over how the platform he helped create has been misused. Words cannot begin to express the profound sorrow I feel that a service we designed to bring people happiness and joy has been abused to cause harm. SNAP says it does not have reports about Ellen's specific case, but called it illegal and against our policies, adding, we work diligently to prevent predators from misusing and abusing Snapchat. 
The protests around the Argentine Congress during the debate on the omnibus law, the fa flagship project of President Javier Milei's economic policy, ended in a confrontation between demonstrators and the police. No serious injuries were reported, but there were numerous incidents involving tear gas and pepper spray amid the confrontation. Police were seen using pepper spray to break up the protest and arresting several demonstrators. Argentine lower chamber was debating yesterday a bill proposed by libertarian president Javier Milei to overhaul the South American country's economy that is buckling under high debt loads, inflation running at over 200% and a myriad capital controls to protect the Argentinian peso. Milei faces a major challenge to push the bill through with his coalition, only having a minority in both chambers, which means he has to win over allies. Well, Taiwan's parliament today elected a former presidential candidate for the largest opposition party as its new speaker who will be responsible for hosting visiting foreign lawmakers and who the ruling party has said is pro-China. The Democratic Progressive Party last month won the presidential election but lost its majority in parliament. China, which claims uh, Taiwan as its own despite the objections of the government in Taipei, views the DPP as separatist. Under Taiwan's presidential system of government, it is uh, the president who appoints the premier with no parliament majority. Now the DPP will have to work with the opposition to get its uh, legislative agenda passed. The largest opposition party, the Kuomintang, won one more seat than the DPP. But the small Taiwan People's Party took eight seats, depriving rather the KMT of a majority in a 113-member house. Well, uh, you heard earlier on uh, about the $55 billion deal package for Ukraine that is coming out from the EU summit, but uh, on the sidelines of the EU summit, uh, the uh, small piles of flames prompted police to use a hose to spray water around Luxembourg Square, where thousands of farmers and tractors from around Europe were demonstrating at the location of the summit. Now, other Dirana's uh, Panchali Ratnasekra is watching that story from uh, Helsinki in fl Finland and joins me now with the latest Panchali. Yes, Mahesh. Dozens of tractors filled the square in front of the European Union Parliament and the farmers set up small bonfires and hooted tractors' horns to attract attention. Leaders met in the city from 10 a.m. to discuss financing for Ukraine. While the farmers' crisis was not officially on the agenda of EU summit, it was discussed in a lower scale. Farmers have been blocking highways in France and Belgium in recent days and protests spread elsewhere in Europe. Spanish and Italian farmers said they were joining the protest movement that has also hit Germany, aiming to press government to ease environmental rules and shield them from rising costs and cheap imports. Mahesh. All right, uh, Panchali Ratnasekara, the Dirana World News Special Correspondent, uh, reporting from uh, Helsinki in Finland. Now, U.S. Uh, readies weeks of retaliatory strikes against Iran-linked targets. However, the Biden administration hasn't yet finalized the targets, but it is preparing a campaign that would last for weeks. This is after three U.S. military members were killed in Jordan, uh, which the U.S. says are led by Houthi rebels. New details on the expected American retaliation for a deadly drone attack on U.S. troops for which President Biden holds Iran responsible. U.S. officials describing a campaign that could last for weeks, expected to include Iranian targets outside of Iran. The targets have not been finalized, but to expect strikes on multiple places in several countries and locations, including cyber operations. When you're talking about what we're anticipating here, which won't just be a one-off. As I said, the first thing you see will not be the last thing. Today, the White House saying an umbrella group of Iranian-backed militias called the Islamic resistance in Iraq carried out Sunday's attack on the remote outpost in Jordan. Three American soldiers were killed. Video of President Biden calling the parents of specialist Kennedy Sanders. We're promoting her posthumously to sergeant. Oh, wow, that Thanks, is sir. the best news I've heard today. Thank you so much. You don't know how much that means to us. But there are questions. U.S. strikes in recent months retaliating for attacks by Iranian-backed groups, including a faction of the Islamic resistance in Iraq, did not deter them. 
and the current delay in a US response is giving the militias time to prepare. A senior Iraqi official tells many Iranian-supported factions have been evacuating bases. Meanwhile, one militia with ties to Iran, Qatayb Hezbollah, announcing it's suspending attacks against US bases. But a government advisor here says Iran and its proxies likely hope to push President Biden to stand down and cannot be trusted. They are still maneuvering, they are still collecting intelligence, they are still planning additional strikes on U.S. targets. Now, U.S. Secretary of Defense Austin Lloyd during a meeting with uh, U.K.'s Defense Minister Graham Shapps at the Pentagon has said that the U.K.'s partnership with the U.S. to address the healthy attacks against military rebels and vessels uh, and commercial shipping in the Red Sea is very much pivotal. Other than that, Natasha Lowe is following that story for us tonight and joins me via Zoom from London. Yes, Mahesh. The pair's meeting comes on the heels of the last month's coordinated strikes against military targets in Houthi control parts of Yemen, which were aimed at diminishing the rebel group's ability to launch further attacks against vessels operating in international waters. Mr. Austin thanked Mr. Shapps for the UK's aid in the Red Sea, as he said the US-UK special relationship is as strong as ever. Mr. Austin said that the United Kingdom's partnership is powerful to addressing these reckless and illegal attacks against military vessels and commercial shipping in the Red Sea. He also said the two nations were working shoulder to shoulder to confront the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. Mahesh. Indeed. Uh, well, Natasha Lowe, other than the World News Special Correspondent, reporting from London in the UK. Thank you. Even though Ukraine managed to get uh, over $55 billion uh, from the EU summit, they failed at the International uh, Court of Justice uh, in making their case against Russia. That's story right after this break. This is World News Tonight. Welcome back everyone to World News Tonight. Now the International Court of Justice has rejected much of a case filed by Ukraine that accused Russia of finding separatist rebels in eastern Ukraine a decade ago, saying only that Moscow has failed to investigate alleged breaches. Kiev had accused Moscow of being a terrorist state whose support for pro-Russian separatists in the eastern Ukraine was a harbinger for the full-fledged 2020 invasion. Judges at the International Court of Justice on Wednesday rejected most of Ukraine's case against Russia, though they found Moscow violated elements of a UN anti-terrorism treaty. In a legal setback for Kyiv, the World Court also turned down Ukraine's request for reparations. Here's Court President Joan Donahue. The court does not consider it necessary or appropriate to grant any of the other forms of relief requested by Ukraine. The case looked at Kyiv's accusation that Russia has equipped and funded pro-Russian forces, including rebels who shot down MH17 in July 2014, killing all 298 passengers and crew. Ukraine argued that Russia supplied the missile system that shot down the aircraft. Russia has rejected allegations about funding and controlling separatists in eastern Ukraine as fiction and, quote, blatant lies. But the court declined to rule specifically on the plane, saying terrorism funding violations only cover money, not weapons or training. On discrimination, judges found Moscow did not do enough to support Ukrainian language education in Crimea after its 2014 annexation. The court's judgments are final and cannot be appealed, but it has no way to enforce rulings. Ukraine's representatives stressed the judgment established Russia violated international law. Now, dozens of Israelis formed the human chain at a Gaza border crossing as protests against, uh, against the entry of humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip continued. The demonstrations have led to the IDF uh, closing off two of the crossings, labeling them as closed military zones. For days, Israeli protesters have blocked aid getting into Gaza through the Karem Shalom crossing. Dozens have been arrested. They're demanding the return of hostages before more aid is allowed in. A framework for a new deal is said to be in place. Reportedly, it would see the release of the 136 remaining hostages in phases. In return, there would be a ceasefire lasting 
many weeks and Palestinian prisoners would be released as well. The mood in recent weeks in Israel has changed and divisions have widened over the course of the war, the country's leadership and the lack of a new hostage deal. It's early evening in West Jerusalem. Hundreds of protesters are marching close to the Prime Minister's residence in the city. At the same time, demonstrations are taking place across Israel, the largest in Tel Aviv. Netanyahu has criticized the protests, saying they don't help and only harden Hamas's position. Netanyahu's popularity has fallen dramatically in recent months and he is undergoing pressure to agree a new hostage deal. Even if he does, though, the right wing in his coalition have threatened to collapse the government if they think the deal would equal a win for Hamas or lead to a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. Netanyahu is treading a fine line. His country is divided and his position is unstable. According to a Reuters Ipsos poll released, uh, President Joe Biden's approval ratings declined last month as Americans worried about the economy and immigration while the Democrats ramped up his re-election campaign. Only 38% of polls responded said that they approved of Biden's performance as president, down from 40 in December. Now, his public approval ratings has held below 50% since August 2021, stirring concern among his fellow Democrats as he faces an expected election rematch with Republican former President Donald Trump in November of this year. Now, a separate Reuters Ipsos poll earlier this month showed that Trump with a six percentage point lead in that matchup. The latest poll found rising concerns about immigration with 17% of respondents listing it as the most important problem facing in the US today up sharply from 11% who cited as the most pressing issue in December. There's a cheeky little thief in Australia. That story right after this break. to World News Tonight and Hollywood actor Alec Baldwin has pleaded not guilty to involuntary manslaughter over the death of cinematographer Hayley Hutchins. Hutchins was shot dead on the set of Rust, a forthcoming western film near Santa Fe in New Mexico in October of 2021. Actor Alec Baldwin pleaded not guilty on Wednesday to charges of involuntary manslaughter at a Santa Fe court. The case surrounds the 2021 onset shooting death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins during a rehearsal for the filming of the Western movie Rust in New Mexico. Court documents show the 65-year-old actor entered his plea as he waived his right to an arraignment, which allows him to remain free without posting bond. It comes nearly two weeks after a grand jury indicted the actor on January 19th, reviving a criminal case that had been dismissed months earlier. The Emmy-winning performer has denied responsibility for Hutchins' death. He insists he was told the gun was so-called cold, meaning it contained only blank rounds. He also said the weapon fired without him pulling the trigger. Original charges against him last year were dropped over the possibility that the revolver being used could have been modified to allow it to go off by itself. The new charges came after an independent forensic test found the gun would not fire unless the trigger was pulled. With live rounds strictly banned from film sets, the question of how one was loaded into Baldwin's gun remains at the center of the fatal shooting. In a court filing on Monday, the prosecutor said they had developed substantial evidence that the film's weapons handler, Hannah Gutierrez, had brought live rounds on set when she first began work on the movie. Gutierrez faces a February 21st trial on separate involuntary manslaughter charges. Well, uh, for the survivors of the Japanese earthquake earlier this year, it seems to be a struggle. Most Japanese people lost everything they had. Some are hanging on to the very little they have, which includes their lifelong buddies and their pests. 
It's been about a month since Yoshimi Tomita began to live in her car with her two cats. That's when a devastating magnitude 7.6 earthquake struck Japan's Noto Peninsula, killing more than 200 people and displacing tens of thousands more. Tomita was trapped under a roof for 10 hours. When she was rescued, she emerged with her cats Rion and Reito to find herself among the displaced and for local evacuation centers to turn them away. They told me that if they allowed cats, people would say, well, what about my chameleon? And they'd never hear the end of it. So that's when I knew they wouldn't let me bring my pets in. With no home and no shelter, Tomita lived in her car with her cats. After a month of searching, the trio finally found a center that would accept them. They moved in on its opening day, and Tomita could finally sleep lying down. Without the new center, she wonders if she would have, quote, buckled under the mental strain. Ikumi Tsujimoto is an animal welfare manager from the NGO that co-runs the new evacuation center and says the situation is not unique. Our surveys have shown that there are quite a large number of people living in their cars, leaving their pets in their damaged homes, and then returning to care for them, or even staying together in their damaged homes with their pets. Tomida is now one of around 13,000 residents living in evacuation centers, according to Ishikawa Prefecture's government. They say a program to build about 13,000 temporary homes over the next few months is underway. Eventually, Tomita hopes to move for the freedom of her cats, who must remain caged or on a leash at the center. But without a disaster victim certificate that would help her leave Ishikawa, and no word on whether temporary housing will become available to her, Tomita has no option but to remain at the center for now. Uh, here's a story of a little cheeky thief who thought it would be a good idea to cheat the claw machine. Well, get the price for himself. That plan kind of went south. It's past 7pm and the three-year-old parents don't quite know what to do. Ethan's trapped in a prison of his own making, one packed full of plush toys, climbing into a claw machine at a Kapalabar shopping centre. I was about two metres away from him and he was in that machine and up it in a matter of seconds. He just stood up and he just jumped straight on top of all the toys thinking he was king of the mountain. He can't, or won't, get out. Glass. Perfect. Glass. He doesn't look too worried, but police are called in, quickly hatching a rescue plan. The sign says two plays for five dollars, but officers aren't playing games. It goes to that back corner. Yep. Tap it this one here. Ethan, cover your eyes, hide. The toddler takes cover and lifted out by police, handed over to his parents who've scored the ultimate prize, Ethan's safety. You won a prize, which one do you want? Ethan was just ecstatic that police came, he loves the police. This is the first in 11 years of policing. Yeah, that was silly, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Reuniting with his rescuing officer today, who had other ideas. That's all right. As for the message for parents from police. Beware the gumball machine. The best advice comes uh, from that last policeman. Go to the bargain machine. <laughs> well, that is a part of your world tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back again uh, tomorrow at the same time with another edition. See you then. Bye for now.